All right, I'm talking to my buddy Dave Meltzer uh, of Wrestling Observer Newsletter, one of the most knowledgeable cats walking the planet on the business of pro wrestling or sports entertainment as it is today. Uh, Dave, in uh, the last couple of hours, been taking a lot of phone calls from fans of the Steve Austin Show. We wanted to talk uh, what came out of the Royal Rumble as we head into the home stretch of the WrestleMania 30 build. And what happened with some of the specific talents there that night? Uh, I'll start with you, and uh, let's kind of bottom line this. We'll talk for just a few minutes on each subject. Uh, Daniel Bryan losing to Bray Wyatt, opening match, a decent match, and uh, people are really concerned with his lack of a green light push. What are your thoughts on where they're going with young Daniel Bryan? I think that they're. I I think you know, and and I think partially this is the crowd forcing it on them, but I think that at some point he's going to get the championship. I don't know if it's going to be Elimination Chamber, WrestleMania, two more months down the line. Of course, I thought that in, in, uh, in August, you know, when they started that program, I thought that it was going to end up at, at the, uh, what's it was, the Hell in the Cell match, where I thought he was going to win, and then Sean turned on him. So I, I think they're still building to that moment because the crowd's kind of insisting on it because they're so behind the guy. Um, the loss to Bray Wyatt didn't really concern me because sometimes they'll beat guys, Correct. Uh, you know, to set up, you know, Bray Wyatt as a contender for Brian if Brian wins the championship. It, it all makes sense. Plus, Bray Wyatt's being built for John Cena, right? So I expected Bray Wyatt to win that match. So that didn't, that didn't, nothing's concerned me on that. So I think it's still going to end up in that direction at some point. I hope it is anyway. It'll be weird if it doesn't actually. Well, I mean, to, to me, for for this kid to be as hot as he is with, without a real focused laser beam, you know, green light push. It's uh it's pretty phenomenal. When you watch what's going on in Monday Night Raw, and of course I know you watch all of the time. I just started tuning back in so I could uh talk more about the business. But I mean for a, a cat like this to be this hot, uh is it translating into ticket sales and merch sales in the arenas? No, it isn't, which is a really weird thing because a lot of people get hot at me when I bring that up because Daniel Bryan actually did an interview uh, before the Royal Rumble, where you know, one of the, where the guy was interviewing, God, you're so hot, everyone's doing this, and he just and he, you know, I thought it, we gave, he gave a great answer, and he just said, we don't know because there's no proof um, if this is translating into pay-per-view buys and ticket sales, and he said at the end of the day, they have to make the decisions based on if people, you know, who people are going to buy tickets and pay-per-views for. At the same time, people and and rightfully so are going to me and going like, well, who really draws big? when they're not given the full green light. I mean, even with you, you know, you were, you were hot, but when you really took off is when they really got behind you. It wasn't like, you know, you were doing sellouts while they were beating you every week, if you know what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, takes, it takes a synergistic effort. The crowd has to go with you. They can push, you know, you know they can push guys and, they can, and it can fail because the crowd is not the guy the crowd wants. But they can, um, if a guy, you know, for a guy to really be a mega draw, They've got to be. They've got to be behind him at, at a level, and, and and they've never really got behind him to that level. So the you know realistically the jury's out. But the chance have the chance meant sell out crowds every night? No, they have not. But again, you know I don't know that the business is in a period that's going to really facilitate sold out houses. You know, like back in the day. And, you know, you're, you're looking at, you know, houses that John Cena, Randy Orton, the rest of the bunch are on. They, you know, they've got some, uh, you know, pretty good cats out there right now. So I don't think the, the full weight of that's going to fall on, you know, the shoulders of Daniel Bryan. Uh, just perception is reality, though. When you, when you watch what's going on in those Monday Night uh, Raws, it's absolutely incredible uh, for a cat to be that hot. And so they're certainly behind him. And, and I think you want to feed into that energy. You can only walk that razor's edge of, you know, filling with the crowd and, you know, making people want something so bad that they, they want it more or turning them off. Uh, where do you do? And I, I think they set the table at, at the Royal Rumble, and I think they'll move uh, a chess table, and I think they'll move the pieces around by at least listening to the crowd a, a little bit as they head into, uh, you know, New Orleans for WrestleMania 30. I think, you know, they, at the end of the day, you have to, and you, 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 you know, you have to react to the crowd when the crowd's are so vociferous. The one thing about the crowd, and this was um, this last Monday's crowd, that was was uh, I don't want to say con- uh, concerning I guess it might, might be the right word the the the, uh, the Cleveland crowd is that they were so into Daniel Bryan and they got him out there first so everyone get their yeses out but then for the rest of the show you had you were wheeling all these guys out and they were just sitting there waiting even even Cena didn't get the reaction he used to get right I mean no Batista didn't get 
any reaction, I mean, compared to what I would have expected for a guy who just won the Royal Rumble and a guy who's been gone for four years and was a top guy. And it was like they were, you know, they were so into Daniel Bryan, but it was almost at the expense of the, the show. And when you've when you got a three-hour show, I mean, you need, you need to have a lot of guys over, or that show can, can drag a lot. Well, I mean, yeah, and that, that's, you know, one of the, man, when you're talking about doing three hours live TV, man, you need a, a, a roster full of uh, talent that is really, really over. And I say that with due respect to everybody's there. I mean, the, the, as we both know, I mean, uh, talent's kind of thin right now. They're building up these cats, trying to give them uh, as much experience as possible. But experience happens on a yearly basis. You know, it's not like all of a sudden a cat has a bunch of experience. It, it takes a long time to accrue a talent with uh, many years in the business. Uh, so that being said, Batista goes out in Cleveland, uh, and then the pop is what it is, uh, and he wins the Royal Rumble. Your thoughts there? No surprises, certainly. He was positioned to win that thing. Yeah. Um, I figured going in there, you know, one of the things in this, again, when you talk about the um, the talent, I mean, they got a lot of guys who are, who are very good athletes that are very talented, that work hard, you know, up and down the roster. But you know, when when I was like looking at the lineup for the Royal Rumble, and I was thinking like, okay, who could win? And I figured Batista was winning, but it was like it came down. It was Batista, and and Daniel Bryan was the other one where you figured, well, maybe he'll come in as a surprise and win. And those were the only two because I was looking. Well, Roman Reigns is is not quite there. I think he's going to do act, actually exactly what he did. And then I'm looking at the rest of the guys. Eh, he can't win. He can't win. He's not really getting pushed. And it's like. To me, like when you when you got a Royal Rumble, don't don't you want it where you know? I mean, it's never where a lot of guys can win, but you know, hopefully you go in there with you know five, six potential winners. And this one, they went in with with one real potential winner was the guy who won. And and to me, that was again, I I, I you know, it speaks to the thing of they've got a lot of guys over to a certain level, but they don't have any kings, and they need they need you know a couple of you know they got John Cena. And uh, they need they need you know they need to get uh, you know they need to get Brian to that level because he's hot and he and he is in the fans' eyes anyway. And a couple of but they also need two or three more guys because they, they need opponents for these guys mm-hmm. that are at that level. And, and you know Bray Wyatt obviously they're they're working hard with him. Working hard. He's got he's got a ways to go. The promos are are, are good. They're not great yet, but I'm starting to buy into him a little bit. Uh, his work is uh, vastly improving in the ring. I think the kid's got a lot of upside. He's going to be great down the road. Not quite there yet. I really felt back going back to that. Uh, Royal Rumble, spot number 30, Ray Mysterio comes out. Poor Ray, one of the uh, you know, nicest guys in the business, uh, a hellacious Hall of Fame career who's done so much uh, in the business to come out at number 30 spot and to get the reception that he got. I mean, it, that was just, to me, hey, put, put, a, put a hellacious heel in spot 30 because that was built to boo. Absolutely. And I was, I was like, uh, surprised because I think that before the show, I think a lot of people, like in their minds, like were were thinking that, that Daniel Bryan was going to come in at number thirty and, and win. Absolutely. I mean, now he'd doing. already worked, but people assumed he was going to be in the Royal Rumble. People assumed. So right. you know, that never, was on he, them, but it translates over to what happened. Right. He was never advertised. And they right. Made that clear, and he, they even did a promo once where it was kind of made clear that you know he wasn't going to be in the Rumble. That he was. That they, I think the promo was so, that like the two Wyatt guys, you know, Rowan and uh, Luke Harper, are going to be in the Rumble. Bray Wyatt's not. And, and Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan are going to be taking care of business in their singles match, so they're not going to be in the Rumble. But I don't think people really picked up on that. So it was said, but but I think people blew that off and just figured, or maybe they figured it was a red herring anyway. But yeah, I mean, like they should have put, you know, you know, even if it's Del Rio, you know, I guess because because they mm. they if you look at that roster, yeah. I mean, they're really thin on on top heels. So, but yeah, of course, like since everyone's expecting it to be. Uh, uh, Daniel Bryan. I mean, it was a perfect spot for a, for a Del Rio or somebody like that to right. come out and just the crowd to just turn on them something fierce. Right, and, and, and you know, and and Del Rio could have used that number thirty spot, you know, because he's kind of you know kind of gone by the wayside a little bit, trying to keep him included, but he's lost some of the lust. 